So now I ask Peter Jean JT Teodoro, who is graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Humanities, to speak on behalf of the class of 2012. I'm going to post this up on Facebook. Are y'all ready to have fun? Getting to know you this well wasn't what I intended to do. I ended up knowing plenty, sometimes too much about you. See, we came from different sides of town, different towns, different states, different coasts, different countries, even from different continents. And for four years, we shared the same world in San Rafael. One day, you probably made a sudden stop along Grand Avenue before it crossed Locust because two large deer just crossed the road. <laughs> with a baby deer struggling to catch up. And another one, and another one. You admired the flutter of a hummingbird's wings around the Meadowlands lawn. And up above with a view of Mount Tam, you probably saw a hawk gliding against the wind in a steady place like a sticker on the wallpaper of a blushing sunset kissed sky. You saw a zap of lightning in your peripherals while walking towards Alemany Library, realizing it was a gorgeous blue jay diving into the bushes. You probably avoided the gallery of webs displayed by the spiders on the low branches of the trees leading up to Fanjo. You encountered a few hares running around the lawn of Edge Hill Mansion and squirrel villages on the tall trees. You probably scrammed when you heard a buzzing bee who set out a quest to pollinate the flowers we now see blooming in late spring. And you met a neighborhood cat named Tim who hangs out near Guzman after your night classes. <laughs> When night turned morning, you heard the a cappella chants of birds singing gospels to the earth. You've taken hikes around the hills in the fire trail, pondering what you would do if you saw a mountain lion. And you might have asked yourself, was the admission to the national park included in my tuition fee? This national park of a campus is where we have shared experiences, a park of a legacy passed down for us to walk and study in. The beauty of our campus is evident. But I learned that in our uh, rush to be in time for class, or while we're occupied with projects and personal issues, we sometimes forget this beauty around us. Because there's too much here to appreciate. And I'm not just talking about nature and squirrels. I'm talking about the beauty of people, and how I discovered the little things about you. We came from meeting each other at an icebreaker or party, to playing rock band and trash talking with people in online Halo, to road tripping down to SoCal, to being housemates, even getting evicted. <laughs> We've shared each other's couches and shared countless laughs that we couldn't duplicate. I noticed you grow as an artist. I still remember the work you displayed in the library. We learned music together as a tight-knit group. You broke out of your shell when you performed in Soul Candy. It wasn't your time to get your bachelor's then. With a little more traveling, experience, and struggle, you've come back to school for your degree and shared insights from a generation before me. You taught me that there's no shame in enrolling later. Taught me that we are learners in and out of school, that we are lifelong students and teachers. You showed me what it meant to master a complex piece. Watching you perform it is like you were simply going to sleep, like the art form is your bed, and all you needed to do was sink into it. So effortless, people don't know how much sweat you poured behind the scenes in order to deliver with such brilliance. You always kept it real. And though insecurities and jealousy can throw javelins of judgments and rumors your way, you had a castle of confidence. Positive energy like water flowed through the moat surrounding you, and only respect could enter your gates. Because you treated everyone like a queen and a king, so you deserve to be treated the same way. You're a force of positivity and respect on our campus no matter what they say. When the music played, I knew you would bring it. Matter of fact, you would bring it even before the music played, because you told me that everything was dance, from our pulse to our breath to our walk. As a carrier of light, you're a poet of kinetics, from the flick of your finger, the passion in your eyes, to the tips of your toes. So in everything I do, I've made it a point to dance with such commitment as you. I've witnessed you become a leader. We started a student association together, created events that became new Dominican traditions, built a family through our need to rediscover our cultural heritage. You were an RA, an ASDU. You took initiative when many just complained. We opened up to each other in leadership, discussed philosophy, politics, covered stories, and shared our writings with each other. We studied abroad together and became lost in a new world. We seized the spirit of our new places traveled 
and wish we could bring it all home. From then, we were homesick between multiple places. You told me about your stories from NCUR, the researches you conducted, the labs you interned for, and how meaningful your work has become for you. Your life was fulfilled when you opened up a child's confidence, when you taught someone how to walk again, when you cured another of their maladies with medication, therapy, and noble intentions, when you, when you made relationships in the office, the classroom, the hospital, the field, when your patient held onto you until, until their last breath, as they finally rested their eyes thankful to know that you were with them until the end. I would often come across the oh-so-glorious smell of your sweaty lacrosse gear on my way to open gym. You told me about your sports tournaments in Hawaii, representing the Penguins, the toughest, most rugged mascot in the NCAA. Okay, well, maybe not rugged, but the coolest. You told me how much it meant for you to work as a nurse in Uganda, to acknowledge the privilege you've been granted here, and apply your work where it matters the most in places where each drop of water is a diamond, where poverty and smiles coexist, where the little things are celebrated, where a few minutes, a few cents, just a bit more love and care saved a life. And you wondered why our human greed has denied others of this, that their simple needs are sacrificed by our first world indulgence for luxury and extravagance. We've seen each other wear multiple uniforms and hats, witnessed each other's success as well as mistakes. We spent all-nighters together because 90% of the time, we didn't pace ourselves well enough to sleep right. Our cram of studies included countless jack-in-the-box runs, even soul food if we had the money to spend. But in the end, we got it together, hence why we're here. We had differences, differences and, lost friendships from, and lost friendships. And when it comes to the problems of the world with poverty, social and political injustices, wars and the damages on our environment, Everyone has their own way of seeing things, with opinions on how these things are to be addressed. But each day, with our differences of where we're from, we saw how much we had in common in this Dominican park, where we sometimes shared 14 meals together in a week, with a chance to say hi to each other at least thrice in one day, and knew each other on a first name basis or by nicknames and inside jokes. We saw each other as human beings like ourselves, no matter how distant our upbringing, how varying our personality, how clear the color line, how established the gender role. Turn page. <laughs> how imbalanced the class, how long the generation gap, how conflicting the belief, and how alienating the culture. Ooh, getting off. <laughs> getting to know you this well wasn't what I intended to do. But being with you throughout college was the greatest experience I could ask for. I learned about you in profound ways, and there is much more about you than I first thought. And you taught me much about myself, beyond the superficial armor I chose to wear come in, uh, coming in. And this is what makes our experience special. An eye-opening experience that many people may never have. An eye-opening experience that reminds us to keep our eyes open. Because life is so large and complex, our bubble of a world in this park is the tip of the iceberg. So as penguins, let's swim. And march to new lands, like the Dominican sisters who wore habits and chartered this college with merely a vision, commitment to serve, scarce resources, and the ability to bake delicious cookies. <laughs> One person who comes from a different world is merely a portal to what else we're missing before we explore these portals. We can't miss out on due recognition. Let's thank our wonderful administration and the legacy that the Dominican sisters have left us for having a vision that we were nurtured in. Let's thank our faculty from the School of Business and Leadership, Education and Counseling Psychology, Health and Natural Sciences, my school. There you go. I'm proud of you, that's what's up, thank you. My school, Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. Service Learning, the Pathways programs, and all other programs. We can all go on about our favorite professors. I have many great things to say about them, except it would be unfair for me to do so if only I could share. Let's thank the Office of Student Life, Campus Ministry, our career and internship offices, and alumni relations for bringing our Dominican experiences full circle by sharing Dominican traditions, staying true to its ideals, keeping us bonded and included in the community. Let's thank them in advance as they keep us connected to our alma mater and help determine our future paths. 
Let's thank the great workers, the staff and facilities crews who do the work we take for granted. They prepare to work at dusk, in the night and at dawn so that we can study and enjoy this place during the day. Last but not least, let's thank our families. Our mothers, I wish I could see my mom right now. Our fathers, our parental figures, our children, our siblings, our best friends, our relatives, our mentors, our community from our hometown. Through the ups and downs, we can't count how many times they've been there for us. They're the most meaningful relationship we will ever have. Let's remember all that we have here. And I ask everyone to please close your eyes just once. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath and inhale all the life you can. Exhale a future of endless possibilities. Feel the touch of the souls of your loved ones, those who are here and those who are far away. Open your eyes. Look at the sky and remember the dreams of our loved ones who have passed away. Right now I'm thinking about my pops. This prayer is dedicated to them. To Jordan Fromm. To Beto Hernandez. To Jonathan Maloney, his wife, their two children, and Stephen Culbertson. May our work come to life through the seas of their souls and dreams as they rest in power within our hearts, pumping life to the palms of our hands and the arches of our feet. Yes, our life's work leads to endless possibilities, and I'm looking, for to, uh, looking forward to a time when I could call you about your research and the work you did, to ask if you're interested in collaborating on a project, if you want to start a business with me, if we could send my niece and nephew to your clinic or your school, when I could ask about our reunion, or if we could simply hang out, get a few drinks and crack some jokes. Let's stay in touch, because truly all we have at the end of the day is our vision, our story, and each other. May the world be our Dominican park, where we learn in similar ways as we did here. And may we bring souvenirs back from our travels to our communities. <coughs> may we be humbled in awe of how great life is, how little we actually are, yet how much difference our work can make for others' lives. May our senses be F-R-E-E -E free, forever reborn eyes and ears. May we be the ethical leaders and responsible global citizens we were set out to be. May we end the wars in the Middle East, reinvest on healthcare and education, heal our environment with conservation and sustainable practices. May we recognize workers' equity and people's rights around the world. Oftentimes we forget that even Jesus of Nazareth was among the poor and oppressed. So let's pay attention to other people and reconstruct our world economy which relies on child labor, the prostitution of women and the poor in the third world, deforestation and toxic disposal. I ask all of us to be the solution by picking one battle and fighting with our ethics and with purpose. <coughs> I'll end by sharing with you a challenge I tell myself. I want you to die as many times as necessary to rekindle the yearning of a newborn baby. I want you to fly, suspicious, mysterious and scary like an alien denied of their humanity. I want you to be the dust that welcomes the dark, so we'll open our eyes when we're trying to act smart. Be a typhoon, nature's protective arm, to clear the fires of war that they're trying to start. I'd prefer your ship sunk under a sea of harsh tests than to see you remain in an island of regret. Do not believe in ghosts who wander after death. Do your best and die peacefully in your last breath. Practice the theory that you study to serve. May community save you when you fall to your worst. May you reflect on these words, the process never ends. Your spirit committed to progress forever will stand. I said, practice the theory that you study to serve. May community save you when you fall to your worst. May you reflect on these words, the process never ends. Your spirit committed to progress forever will stand. Salamat.